the silent herald of life and death, success or failure. The unseen force that measures man's destiny, reaching its most fateful moment as it slowly strikes the eleventh hour. Must I wait upon the whim of a serving wench? More wine, girl, more wine. The tavern's regulars come first, sir. Not drunken strangers with amorous hands. Insulted by God by a slip of Another a... Another word. Just one. It will cost you your life, sir. What? Who the devil are you? Bill Standish at your service. I take it you are a stranger to the Tavern of Lost Souls. I am, and I shall make a point of not returning. Then we shall both be content... Kitty has one rule for the tavern, and a rule that you have already broken. Oh, what's that? That its clientele should drink like gentlemen. I am a gentleman, sir, by birth, but not by inclination. You guzzle your wine like a fat sow. By death, sir. You dribble your wine over your lace like a blubbering child. But God damn and it. I should enjoy the privilege of running you through. Shall we meet at dawn? Okay. I am... Uh, no swordsman, sir. I then am... pistols, perhaps? Uh, his hands tremble, sir. They could never hold pistols back. <laughs> You've learned his lesson, Barrow. You wish to leave, sir? Uh, 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 yes, yes. But first, your apology, my friend. Kitty owns the tavern of Lost Souls. She is no serving wench. Bo, I don't want his apology. But he wishes to crave your pardon, Kitty. Uh, uh, yes, yes, uh, exactly. I, I had no idea. Good uh, night, my friend. I do have to leave now. I, uh, an appointment. Most important. Uh, most important. <laughs> Bo, if your sword would serve England as it serves me, why... My would... dear Kitty, my sword serves one man. Bo Standish. It is to my advantage, too, that peace should prevail in the tavern. Good wine and peace go hand in hand. Your glass is empty now. And will remain so. I shall return before midnight, Kitty. I have one thing in common with our departed guest. An urgent appointment on the Dover Road. Take care, Belle. Please take care. <laughs> Unless I take considerably more than that, I shall regard this as a most unprofitable night. Oh, deuce uncomfortable night, Margaret. Cold, wet. Why the devil we couldn't stay the night of that tavern we passed, I can't imagine. Father, you gave Dickens orders that we were to press on to do. Oh, that was in London. I wasn't so damn cold then. We have the packets on time, that's all. Why couldn't Eric get leave from his regiment in the summer? Perhaps because Napoleon was being difficult. Difficult? Has he ever been anything else? Blessed Corsican upstart, that's all he is. Where is it? Any gumption? He'd have driven him out of Spain months ago. As we British were driven out of America, Father. Margaret, I'm tired of being reminded in the middle of every discussion that 20 years ago I was betrayed at Saratoga. My regiment could have fought on indefinitely. I know, Father. If it had been left to you, America would still be a British colony. Yeah, well, there's nothing to laugh about, Gail. Total disgrace, disgrace. Another thing, I... Ah! What the devil? Who is there? Stick it! Stick it! Stick it! What are we stop for? Well, faces to stop a coach. Throw down that horse pistol, my friend, or I shall perforce shoot it out of your hand. Well, you best be on your way. This is the Earl of Twitterton's coach. Then I am indeed privileged. <laughs> Steady, lad. Steady, girl. The pistol. I'm waiting. Thank you. Come on, lad. A ah, highwayman. And me here like a fool without a pistol. Dickens! God is Miss for me, Sally! Steady, lad. Your lordship, my compliments. And to you, Mark. Ah. If you will descend, I am sure we can terminate our business speedily and allow you to continue your journey. I have no intention of leaving the coach. Neither have I. Too cold. As you wish. If you will hand me your gold, your lordship. No. We'll have to kill me to get it. Father. Well, if you lay a hand on my daughter, I'll hunt you down. I'll have to leave the Bow Street runners myself. The prospect of such a chase excites my curiosity, but even highwaymen can appreciate beauty, ma'am. We are on our way to Dover to meet my brother, sir. 
A man who is risking his life in the service of his country, not in the pursuit of gold stolen from his betters. Ma'am, I had no idea. I have no desire to spoil the homecoming of such a hero. You may drive on, my friend. What? You mean you're simply going to let us go? In the face of such beauty and such valor, what else would I do? Come, lass, we'll fly our trade elsewhere. <laughs> You'd be wise to make all speed to Dover and break the return journey at the Tavern of Lost Souls. Au revoir, my friend. Au revoir. Well, I'll be... Father? Well, I will anywhere. Man, maybe it's can't be the act like a gentleman. Uh, did you get a close look at him, Margaret? I did not wish to. He could have killed us if he wanted to. We're absolutely helpless to her. Could do a thing to stop him if he had a mind to it. Amazing. Are we going to sit here all night, Dickens? You said I was dismissed, your lordship. So not here, are you fool? Oh, halfway to Dover. All right, I'll give you another chance. But next time, shoot, and then whip up the awful. I'll get to Dover before I freeze the mess. pocket where it hurts most. The most unrewarding night to work, Kitty. Except for... Oh, but never mind. I think you would have visitors to stay the night, Kitty. Three of them. Four with the coachman. Well, what happened, Bill? I stopped a coach and made the acquaintance of the Earl of Twissenden. And he had no purse? I don't know. I let him go. You let him go? But why? Why take such risks for nothing? My dearest Kitty, the Earl has a most charming daughter. Haughty, delightful... And very beautiful. She has red hair, no doubt. It was dark. Uh, the night, I mean. Her hair gleamed in the half light. Yes, it was red. And you told him to stay here? I did. Even this tavern cannot exist without custom. Oh, Bo. But there's enough here for both of us. We could live well if you'd help me with the train. My dear, I should die of boredom within a week. You'd die kicking your heels for the merriment of the mob if you persist. <laughs> At Tyburn, no doubt, or perhaps they'll hang me from a gibbet on the Dover Road as a warning to cullies like me. I hope their coach makes good time on the return journey. Because of her? Hmm. <laughs> no, dear Kitty, because of my pocket. Mm. I have a feeling that the Earl of Twissenden will play at cards tonight. And my night's work will be worthwhile, after all. <laughs> It, your lordship. Well, thank you, Kitty. I believe it's your turn to play, sir. What? Oh, yes. Oh, did you have anything worthwhile in this hand? Hope you've got something, Eric. Family honor has got to be retrieved somehow. Nothing, Father. Then I would say that the center is mine, gentlemen. I must say you're a wizard with the card, Standish. Well, I'm off the fortune tonight. Wizards are full of tricks, are they not, Standish? The swiftness of the hand that deceives the eye. Eric, really? Does it not strike you as odd, Father, that ill luck with a card should follow us so painstakingly? Fighting the French seems to have loosened your son's tongue, your lordship. Or is it that His Majesty's forces have tasted defeat once too often? You're a cheat, Standish. A cheese and a liar. Kitty, where is Lord Twissenden's room? On the first floor, number 13. An unlucky number, your lordship. My second will call on you. You own a rapier, I presume? I do. Then we shall settle for swords. Oh, I understand it. The, the, the boy's overwrought here. Surely we can come to some arrangement. By all means, Lord Twissenden. I presume you will second your son. Um... Yes, but I, I regret that you will be present at his death. 
Good night, Your sure, Lordship. <laughs> here by choice, Mr. Standish. Then why? I have come to plead for my brother's life. Your ladyship... I know who you are, Beau Standish. It was you who held us up at Pistol Point earlier tonight on the Dover Road. I have talked with Miss Kitty, and she tells me that you cannot kill him. You cannot. He has only to apologize before morning. Do you think he will do that? I rather hope so. I dislike rising at such an early hour. My father knows Eric was wrong. You did not cheat. There is always the possibility that your brother might kill me. I know everything about you. Your skill with a rapier. How many men have you killed, Bo Standish? The ones who use such words as cheat and liar. But if you were a gentleman... Oh, but I am not. I was born into the gutter, in Cheapside. My clothes are the finest that ill-gotten money can buy. My lace is imported from France. My sword was a gift from the great Sardini himself. My hose is imported from Spain. But even so, I am not a gentleman. You had a chance earlier tonight to rob me. Even kill me if you had wished. You did not do so then. I beg you, do not do so now. Do not rob me of my brother. Your hair is even more beautiful than I thought. Miss Kitty has told me of your prowess with... with the rapier. Could you not defend yourself and... And let your brother live? Lady Margaret, I... I hesitate to dwell upon the consequent blot upon my reputation. But live he shall. Now it is long past your bedtime, Lady Margaret. Go to your room. I give you my word that this is one affair of honour I shall contrive to lose. <laughs> gentlemen, that dueling has been outlawed in England. His Majesty has... If you're to preside at this affair, then do so. I did not come here to talk. There are certain formalities that must I be... I have no intention of retracting my accusation. In fact, Mr. President, I reiterate it. The gentleman I'm to fight is a cheat and a liar. Eric, you young fool. Father, I've made a number of inquiries about this gentleman since last night. He is, among other things, a common highwayman. Do you deny this standing? I dislike the word common. I regard myself as the most uncommon highwayman. By George, of course, you're the... I mistress. should like to examine your points, oh. gentlemen, please. Satisfactory. Thank you. You will remember that first blood decides the victor. Agreed? My adversary is going to spill rather a lot of blood, Mr. Preston. What a ghastless ought to entertain on such a lovely morning. Dr. Welbeck, will you come over here, please? Of course. Get it over quickly, Mr. President. I have an urgent case of shingles to attend. Yes. Uh, ready, gentlemen? Salute. En garde. Play. I thought the army favoured the Italian school, Lord Eric. Have at you. Relax your wrist, Lord Eric. Gently. Your fingers should caress the hilt. I am not in the cell now, Standish. I... I intend to kill you. Ah! Enough. First blood to his lordship. Doctor, will you attend, Mr. Standish? Merry scratch, Doctor. Let me see it. Roll up your sleeve. <laughs> the greatest duelist in England. As a bout, I find it very disappointing. Very good boy. Our coach is waiting. I... A moment, Father. Uh, Shall we meet again, Standish? I shall kill you. Do you understand? It's nothing serious, Mr. Standish. A little blood, that's all. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, wait for me in the cabbage, Eric. Standish, I'd like to talk to you for a moment. 
We have nothing to discuss, Your Lordship. I, uh, I saw you drop your point after Fenton's attack. So it was almost as if you guided his sword into Gray's arm. I assure Your Lordship, you are wrong. I'm, and, uh, I'm deeply grateful to you, Standish. Very fond of me, son. The only heir. Deeply grateful. <laughs> I'm worried about your brother. Deeply worried. He is rather more pompous than usual since the Bo Standish affair, I admit. But no doubt he'll get over it. Uh, well, where is he now? Where he spends every hour of the day, at the great Sardini's fencing school. He's decided that having established such a reputation as a duelist overnight, Father, he can teach even Sardini. What? Oh, stupid young fool. He's paying for lessons from Sardini, but... Eric contrives to make it sound as if the boot were on the other foot. I shall be infernally glad when the young idiot goes back to his regiment. Oh, uh, I suppose I've spoiled him a great deal. Needed a mother's influence. Oh, we've both spoiled him, darling. But Margaret, uh, do you know who Bo Standish is? Yes, Father. Oh. Yes. I'll never understand why he let Eric defeat him. The first few moments of the duel, he made Eric look like a lumbering fool. Masterly, masterly. It was almost as if he wanted to lose the fight. Lose it without coming to any great harm. Huh? He parried that thrust of Eric beautifully and then dropped his sword point just far enough to allow the boy to nick his arm. Uh, Margaret, are you listening? Yes, Father. Well, 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 why the devil should you do that, huh? Uh, in one short night, Bo Standish holds us up at pistol point refuses to take our gold, then contrives to save my son paying the penalty of his bad manners. I don't understand. No, I simply do not understand. I asked him to lose the duel. I see. You what? I went to his room after you and Eric had retired and begged him to allow Eric to defeat him. Do you realize what you've done, Gil? If anyone ever discovers the truth of the matter, I should be the laughing stock of London. Still, I'm, um, I'm glad you did it. Oh, perhaps I can make young Eric see how deucedly lucky he was. Uh, there you are, Father, Margaret. Is you are for Martha? I think perhaps a glass of Madeira. I want to talk to you, Eric. Oh, uh, please, Father, not now. I've had a most exhausting day. You know, Sardinia is quite good with the foil. Do you intend to spend your entire leave fencing? My leave? Oh, of course, I forgot to tell you. I resign my commission. What? You did what? Resign my commission. And what, may I ask, do you intend to do with yourself? Perhaps the tables play the tables, and, well, you know, the usual thing. After all, I have some little reputation to enjoy now. <laughs> I find the glamour that surrounds the man who defeated Bo Standish quite pleasant. Much more so than the winter mud of Spain. I, I say, something wrong. You, you, <coughs> you've resigned your commission. And you think the greatest fencing master in Europe is quite good with the foil. You intend to gamble. Is there anything else you intend? Yes, Father. I intend to repair to my rooms and have Moss to bring me to Madeira. I may join you both for dinner. Come back here, you young butt fool! For strapping, conceited young pop and dad. I'm afraid the time has come, Margaret, for Master Eric to be taught a lesson he'll never forget. This time, I shall visit Bo Standish. This time, I shall plead with him. I should like to make sure that my ears are not deceiving me. As I understand it, you wish me to challenge your son to a duel. Is that right, sir? Quite right, sir. You wish me to defeat him? I do. But he is not to be more than scratched, at most disarmed. Oh, um, correct. I see. May I ask why? Because ever since you fought him, he's been more arrogant than ever. Well, I know perfectly well that you allowed him to defeat you, Sandish. I knew it at the time. And since then, Margaret has told me that she... Uh, uh, well, she told me. At the risk of offending you, sir, how is it that such a paragon should possess such an obnoxious brother? I don't know. Wish I did. Hmm. I don't want him hurt, though. Not, not physically, Sandish. Exactly. Yes. I understand. 
Is everything all right, though? Dearest Kitty, everything is well. Well, just come to the door and yell when you want some more wine. <coughs> May I ask you a question, Bo? Oh, I, I presume I may call you Bo. Of course. Not is it? How did this tavern get its name, the Tavern of Lost Souls? I christened it. Well, it is. When Mistress Kitty's parents died, they left her the tavern. Mm. I was passing one night on my way to a meeting, such as our first, well, yes. and stopped for refreshment. The parlour was full of men in their cups, and amongst them stood Kitty, with a flagon of wine held high above her head as she fought to disengage herself from the arms of a drunken sop. Stadley. It was like a scene from the inferno, my lord. The firelight, the candles, and the tankard spilled on the tables. Well, then, is it time it was christened again? I think not. Mm. There's no more famous or quieter tavern now between here and the coast. Bo, will you do me this favor in regard to my son? On certain conditions, sir. Oh. First, that you and Lady Margaret attend the duel. Secondly, that Sardini himself shall preside. Sardini? Yes, I spent five years in Spain under the guidance of Sardini. I owe my skill with a sword to the maestro. It is fitting that he should be there. This time I promise you will not escape so lightly, Standish. I'm glad to have this opportunity of demonstrating something that you seem to have found hard to believe, Sardini. Your gladness is no greater than my own, sir. You have met my opponent, I trust? We have met, yes. Your seconds are ready. Oh, I'm quite, quite ready, Maestro. Yes. And you, Senor Standish? Of course, Maestro. You will attend, Doctor. I am ready. Then, gentlemen, let us commence. Salute. On guard. Play. There is no hurry. We have time to play. Was that shirt made in Spain, sir? It was. I dislike the cut. Allow me to improve the styling. Why, you... <laughs> I'll kill you for that. I'll... With or without your sword, your lordship. Sheer luck. I lost my grip. Then pick up your sword and try again, sir. You will retire while he does so, Senor Stendish. Back three places, if you please. Of course, master. Your sword, little one. Thank you, Father. On guard, Standish. Defend yourself. Your cravat is abominable, Your Lordship. Abominable. <laughs> At least you will now find it easier to breathe. It will not be long before you cannot breathe at all, Standish. <laughs> Blade should dance, my friend, like this. And this. Your cut position is low, your lordship. You too low, your lordship, allowing me to thrust like so. Oh. Enough. Doctor, you will attend him. At once, maestro. My boy, are you all right, sir? Eric, are you hurt? Get away from me. Get away. Leave me alone. Thank you, Standish. Thank you. Hmm. There's no doubt that now he'll return to his regiment. And, um, that, uh, that purse you requested on the Dover Road is yours. Hmm. I shall send it to the Tavern of Lost Souls. Thank you, sir. I'd better go and attend the boy. I think he'll need me now. Hmm. Bo? Bo, why did you want me here? To say goodbye. What else? Goodbye? But I thought... It really is the loveliest town. Don't joke with me now, please. Not now, Bo. Joke? That I would never do. Not with you. Goodbye, Lady Margaret. Are you coming, Margaret? But, Bo, I thought... I mean... A highwayman. I'm Margaret. <laughs> Goodbye, Bo. You have remembered your lessons well, Senor Standish. Thank you, Master. I am glad that my belief in you was worthwhile. Yes, Senor. Very graceful for an Englishman. Quite remarkable. The severing of his cravat, the saber movement with which you cut his shirt, 
Superb. And your defense, your parries, quite good. But that final thrust, the lunge, that, Senor Standish, was disgusting. <laughs> Be listening for another mounting drama when we again present The Eleventh Hour.